Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about what seems to be the final confirmation of at least one intermediate black hole we discovered somewhere out there. This is actually pretty exciting because we've been looking for these types of black holes for a very very long time. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So for several decades now we've been trying to discover at least one intermediate sized black hole and confirm its existence, but it turns out these are really really elusive and extremely difficult to identify. One of the mysteries regarding them is actually why they're so hard to find and why they seem to be almost completely invisible even though we think they're pretty much everywhere around even our own galaxy. But what exactly are these black holes and why are they so special? Well, they're basically in between the really small, really common types known as stellar sized black holes and the really massive black holes in the middle of various galaxies known as supermassive black holes. Just to give you a size comparison, this right here is an example of Sagittarius A star, which is the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. And here's how all of this compares to planet Earth. Our planet is actually ridiculously tiny in comparison to this black hole. It might be a little bit easier to see if I change the background color because this really shows you how tremendously massive and large these black holes are. Then we have much smaller black holes which are really common known as stellar sized or stellar mass black holes and these are typically only a few kilometers or a few miles across. Here's one that's only a few miles or a few kilometers in radius, I think it's about actually 3 kilometers, which makes it um, one of the smaller black holes we know that exist out there. And these are pretty common, we've actually seen a lot of proof of their existence, but in between the tiny ones and the giant ones, there are these other black holes known as IMBH or Intermediate Mass Black Hole. And in terms of the actual size, they would be very close to a planet like Jupiter or Saturn with masses in around thousands or tens of thousands masses of our own sun. The one we just discovered, or actually the one we just confirmed, has a mass of about 50,000 masses of the sun, giving it the total size of just a little bit larger than Jupiter, but obviously with 50,000 masses of the sun on the inside. But like I mentioned, they seem to be really rare or really difficult to um, find. And as of 2020, the evidence for these black holes was actually not really that good. For example, we've discovered several stars moving extremely fast across the galaxy, and the only explanation to this velocity was if they were actually kicked out from the galaxy by the interaction with an IMBH, with intermediate mass black hole. But in some sense, I guess this is not really a very good explanation. There could have been some other effects that caused such a high velocity. Also, a few months ago, scientists noticed that there was an unusual, really fast moving gas in the middle of our own galaxy that was actually moving a little bit faster than it should. And it seemed to have been moving around an empty spot in the middle, which of course suggested that something really massive was there. Scientists um, assumed that it was probably an IMBH as well. So probably just an invisible black hole somewhere in the middle causing this gas to spin so fast, but once again, the evidence so far is really circumstantial, not really that good. But now, for the first time ever, the scientists were actually able to confirm at least one of these objects in a galaxy relatively far away from us at a distance of about 740 million light years away. Now, this is what they saw. This is actually the original detection from 2006 when we detected what seemed to have been really powerful X-ray bursts. But this burst was not just a typical burst, it indicated something was being destroyed. And although technically this could have been anything, even a neutron star causing this, because this burst lasted for so long and because we were able to use Hubble telescope to confirm that the actual energy released was really really high, the only plausible explanation that made sense was this right here. It was very likely an IMBH destroying a star and creating a tremendous amount of energy in the process. This is exactly what we've been observing for the past 14 years, and this is what these scientists think is still happening there right now. So essentially, by ruling out every other explanation, the only possible explanation left here was that this was literally a black hole destroying a star. It could not have been anything else, and right now the scientists are pretty confident about this. And it was really the combination of the X-ray data and also the visual data that allowed us to see what's really happening here and analyze it very thoroughly. Also remember, this is pretty far away, 740 million light years away. So seeing such a powerful and long event only meant that something really large and massive had to create it. But this doesn't change the fact why these black holes are so difficult to find and why we're having so much trouble identifying more of them, because we have found quite a lot of other black holes out there. 
And one more piece of confirmation here was the location of this black hole. It was actually not in the galaxy itself, it was more on the outskirts. Kind of where we expect to find these intermediate black holes um, to begin with. And we think that it probably came from the typical globular cluster that we find in various galaxies, including our own, orbiting around the galaxy itself. Here is an example of a globular cluster from the Milky Way galaxy, and we have quite a lot of these. Many galaxies possess them, and today we believe that these are very likely remains of older dwarf galaxies that essentially made the Milky Way. Basically, the leftover pieces from the initial absorption of other galaxies. And inside of these global clusters, we also believe many of them do possess intermediate-sized black holes that were initially inside the dwarf galaxies. So we think that this is exactly the type of a black hole that generated this destruction of a typical star. And because, as you can see, there are so many different stars here, several million as a matter of fact, it's no surprise that at least one of them would approach really close to the center and get destroyed by the relatively massive black hole in the middle. So this is kind of what we think happened in this particular situation as well. And it also means that we're probably going to be seeing more of these typical emissions and a lot more of these IMBH black hole swallowing stars in the near future because now we kind of know what to look for. But this of course doesn't answer the question of some of the other mysterious black holes possibly in the middle of our own galaxy that we've detected in the last few years. And we obviously still have no idea on how these black holes are generated and what their origin is. For a black hole to become so massive, basically a mass of about 100,000 masses of the sun, it does need to experience some sort of a really cataclysmic event or possibly a lot of collisions. Now we don't really know how this occurred and what happened to these black holes, but for now we're kind of curious to see where they're kind of located. Or more specifically, where can we find more of these black holes to study them in a little bit more detail. And we also are not even sure if every global cluster out there has them. We think some do, but right now there's really no proof. But at least now we have a confirmation that they do seem to exist, and they do seem to act as we think they do, while at the same time being located in the region of the galaxy where we kind of expected to find them. But that's kind of all we know for now. Once we learn more about IMBH or Intermediate Mass Black Holes, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.